Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes. Welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings, and today we're talking about Best State Ever, A Florida Man Defends His Homeland by Dave Barry. Now, Dave Barry has lived in Florida for uh, what appears to have been the bulk of his life. Uh, he did grow up in Armonk, New York, and apparently spent some time living in Pennsylvania. So, he is from you know, the northern parts of the U.S. that actually get snow that aren't known as the weirdest places ever. I mean, not that New York, more particularly New York City, doesn't have something of a reputation for being weird. Any big city will have something of a reputation for being weird, except possibly Cleveland. But, um, the thing is that, as Dave Barry points out, Florida has a particularly... Uh, a hefty reputation for being weird. And, but at the same time, I think the real thing about this book is that it's not that it isn't funny. There's a lot in this book that's funny, but there's a lot in this book that is a thinly disguised sap. Because the thing is that this book opens with uh with Barry describing a thing that he's had in interviews uh, that, you know, people come up to him and they ask the question, what's wrong with Florida? They don't a, ask, you know, why do you live here? Or questions like, they specifically ask, what's wrong with Florida? Or at least so he says. And the thing is that he makes the the point that you know, people complain and ask about what's wrong with Florida, but they keep moving there. That, you know, Florida is, oddly enough, one of those states where arguably there are about three people who live in Florida who are from Florida. That the bulk of the state appears to be made up of what we could call expat New Yorkers and... Uh, elderly people who have decided to move somewhere that they don't have to worry about slipping on ice in the middle of winter because it's Florida and they don't really have winter there the way those of us from up north are used to. Although with global warming, frankly, I'm seeing less and less winter up here as well. Um, the thing is, though, that, you know, people keep moving there, but at the same time everybody makes fun of it, and it's kind of this defensive reaction of, if there's something so wrong with Florida, why do you people keep moving here? And the answer to that, of course, is that it's not a, is that it's very far south and also not a desert. Because California and Texas and other such states are, like, massively desert. Um, also, California has earthquakes, and nobody wants to deal with that. So, uh, what he does in this book is he talks about uh, and visited a whole bunch of just weird places. And, you know, he does a brief pocket history of Florida, which is the usual somewhat historical but somewhat ahistorical summary that Dave Barry does. And then he starts talking about the so-called skunk ape, um, which is a, it, it, it's, there are a lot of different variants on Bigfoot the world over. And the skunk ape is effectively Florida's answer to uh, the Bigfoot legend. Most places have one. Uh, you know, you look long enough and you will find a, you will find a Bigfoot variant that, that people bring up. But, um, in this case, he goes to visit a man named Dave Sheely, who lives in a very, very small town called Achopi, which is a small town that was one of those victims of governmental attempts to uh, deal with environmental issues, because there, this is one of those things that happens 
in a lot of places. We have a history of that in Canada in the 1960s that a whole bunch of families out on the east coast of Canada got booted out of their homes uh, because of various governmental issues and, and uh, you know, environmental stuff and fish stocks and all kinds of other things that they said, nope, you have to move. And it's a thing governments do periodically, and on the one hand, it is wholly understandable, especially when it's a matter of protecting the environment, but the problem is that very often governments do this without placing, without putting in sufficient safeguards to deal with the fact that they are displacing families and taking away their livelihoods, um, and it's, it's always problematic. So, so Barry talks about you know, the skunk ape and how ridiculous it is. And he talks about, you know, how absolutely horrifyingly terrifying the Everglades are because they are filled up with alligators and alligators are terrifying. Um, and he talks about the skunk ape research headquarters, which uh, also serves as a campground store and you can buy skunk ape t-shirts, skunk ape hoodies, skunk ape drink cozies, Skunk ape hunting permits, skunk ape refrigerator magnets. If you can't find a skunk ape related item you're looking for here, it probably doesn't exist. And the thing is that, uh, yes, on the one hand, he is talking, he, he makes fun of the skunk ape thing because it's ridiculous. But at the same time, he expresses a great deal of sympathy for the man who runs that store, who is kind of one of the last holdouts of this small town that was ruined by the government trying to protect the environment. And he points out that this is something that should be preserved because these kinds of roadside attractions have a particular place in history, in the history of the U.S. in general, in terms of, in terms of just what what people used to do when they touristed back in the day. These days, people kind of just go to Florida and then they go straight to A, the beach, B, Disney, or, you know, C, a lot of, you know, nightclubs. But time was when you went on these sorts of things, you went on a road trip and you just stop at whatever random, you know, place happened to catch your eye. Uh, so he talks about Gator land. He goes to Lock and Load Miami, which is a place where you can go and you get to shoot large numbers of guns and you get to shoot semi-automatic weapons and things like that. And um, it it's the kind of place that you honestly don't quite expect Dave Barry to be attracted to. And yet, as he points out, he is very much the kind of guy who likes to, you know, watch stuff get blowed up good, which can be very entertaining. I just don't see the attraction of guns. You know, exploding vacuum cleaner competition. Absolutely. Uh, Semi-automatic to automatic weapons, uh, less so. But, you know, apparently he was into it, or so he claims. Uh, he talks about... Going to Live, which was, at least in 2016, one of the hottest clubs, and he got in there, and he's a man who is in his 60s and his 70s, and, uh, you know, doesn't really belong at a club like that, but he and his wife go anyways to experience it, and, um, and it's a lot of standing around, and... You know, he expresses his distaste for the idea of the celebrity DJ, which is a person who stands at the front of the room and plays pre-recorded music, and making a celebrity of a person who presses a button to put on a particular song, uh, it's easy to understand the distaste. He also spends a great deal of time, he spends a whole chapter talking about the villages, which are a retirement place where a man, where, where, where what you get is old people who can go to this place and they live there and what Dave Barry points out is the fact that everybody drives around in golf carts is ridiculous. There are 
quote, historic plaques out front on which are written elaborate made-up histories about the made-up people who lived in this building decades ago before the building existed. He talks a lot about old people who are performing random freestyle moves such as you would have seen in a disco in 73, couples who took dance lessons and are faithfully executing the steps they learned, and line dancers. And... You know, he's talking about elaborate line dances, complex multi-step routines that you have to practice before you get out there, and the mass of people all moving together. And, you know, they're very, very white, and there's a distinct lack of diversity, and it is, it's, it's very, very old white people, as he describes it, and yet at the same time he points out that it's a place where, where people who are in their 60s and 70s can go and they don't have to have they don't have their kids or their grandchildren going oh my god dad grandpa you are so embarrassing i don't want to be seen in public with you that if they want to go out and dance then they can do that and have a good time that they can listen to the music that they enjoy that they can have nights out that they can have what are kind of equivalent to old person nightclub evenings without having to go through what you go through going to a nightclub because everybody there is the same age as you and everybody there likes the same music. And it's an interesting point because it's that interesting social shift that we've had over the years that, that you know, yes, at one time children should be seen and not heard, but right now, you know, these are... Elder, these are older people who, you know, they are be they will, if they leave, they will be told to be seen and not heard. And it's about the lifestyle. It's about, you know, being able to, uh, you know, enjoy being in this place. And sure, it's repetitive and and a whole bunch of things, but it, it's, it's just such an interesting point that he makes. But Dave Barry's big point about Florida is that it's a weird place and that's why he likes it. Um, and, you know, it's, it is true that a place like that would be soul-sucking, to at least the way that he, pre the kind of person that he presents himself as being. Um, uh, but, you know, he talks about how it's just, he can see the attraction of saying that these are people who they want to actually enjoy themselves and they don't want to have to worry about people thinking that they're weird or wrong or what have you. So, it's it's a very very interesting and unusual book because it has it has that ineffable touch of Dave Barry humor to it but there is a distinctly sappy undertone it's lacking a lot of the cynicism that you find in things that he did when he was younger um and in a way, I think he may be softening his edges. Uh, he, he's softening his edges, I think, a little bit as he gets older. Um, partly, I suspect, because I think he might be at least pulling back a little bit from pushing that envelope. Uh, because when you push the envelope, you have to do... You have to be a little bit more on the ball. You have to be a little bit more mentally active. And I think, I think this is very, it's very Dave Barry. I, you know, I, I don't want to deny for a second that this isn't a very funny book. Um, it's not like Dave Barry Turns 50, which is a book that I did not find funny, which is a book that you will not hear me talking about because I actively do not like that book. I think it is one of his rare fails as an author. Um, but it's much, much softer and those times that I've talked about in the past about his deft touch with serious, meaningful writing as well as funny, it's much, much, it's very prevalent in this book. It's extremely prevalent. 
Um, and I think that's all I've got to say, so I will see you all next week.